Okay, and he hello and welcome to uh, this webinar titled uh, Learning on the Go, Maximizing Mobile Learning in Schools. My name is Mukunda Krishnaswamy. I'm the te Chief Technology Officer at Lomos Learning. I would be the moderator for our presentation today. Uh, Marissa is uh, the speaker and it's my pleasure to introduce her. Uh, Marissa has worked in education for the past 13 years. She has taught 8th grade his history uh, and was a campus level administrator, elementary, junior high and high school levels. She has uh, served as a curriculum writer and assessor. Her education related publications include two district wide curriculum guides for Cary Independent School District and a curriculum guide for Lumos Learning. Uh, in addition to her uh, campus level work, Marissa serves on US Congressman Michael McCall's Educational Advisory Board and is a member of Texas Council of Women, School Executives and a number of leading organizations. Uh, she's been recognized three times in the Who is Who in Educational Leadership publication. Uh, before I pass this on to Marissa, a couple of uh, quick housekeeping tasks. During the presentation, all lines would be muted. However, you can post your questions in the chat box. At the end of the presentation, we will have uh, about five minutes for questions and answers. Uh, Marissa and I would be happy to answer any questions that come up. Marissa, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Makunda, and good morning. And thank you for joining us as we explore how to maximize learning on the go. We are very excited to have a full house with us today. And because we have so many people online, as Makunda mentioned, we will have all participants muted during the webinar. This will give everyone the best opportunity to hear the content. But as we mentioned, and as we mentioned, we will have a time for question and answers at the end of the presentation. However, I certainly want you to feel free to participate in the discussion. So if you have a question or a comment you feel needs to be addressed during the presentation, feel free to type it in the chat box on your screen. As educators, we want to maximize the resources around us to help increase both learning and student achievement. But it can be overwhelming to understand the nuances of mobile learning and to know how to best implement it. The goal of our presentation today is to help you understand those best ways to use mobile learning with your students. We will explore what exactly defines mobile learning, what separates it from e-learning, how to use mobile learning in the schools, and then review several areas of mobile learning applications. We will then close with a question and answer portion. And if there are not any questions at this time, we're going to go ahead and get started. Before we look at the content of our presentation, though, I would like to take a quick poll. I'd like to see how many of you are currently using mobile learning in your school. I'm going to go ahead and open the poll now and give you about a minute to answer the question. We're at about 60% voting right now. If you've not had a chance to vote yet, please go ahead and do so. About 80% voted, and we'll wait just a few more seconds. Okay, if we look at our poll results, right now about 100% of you are using some sort of mobile learning on your campuses now. You know, the idea of mobile learning is not a new one. For centuries, people have taken books, paper, and writing utensils with them whenever possible. But as we all know, with the invention of computers, that ability has become significantly easier over the last few decades. Initially, computers and the internet allowed users to explore learning recess in one convenient location. Gone were the days of needing to go from one room to another for something as simple as a definition or added research. It could be accomplished easily and quickly, but with very limited mobility. Early e-learning platforms were then developed, which also increased the ability for learners to focus their learning and exploration of a specific content. With mobile learning labs, these platforms could be taken to the classroom and students could use them easily. No longer were schools limited to just the constraint of scheduling into one or maybe two computer labs itself. 
But mobile devices have truly sparked the need for a new revolution in, le in learning platforms. Learning became limitless with the idea that it could be accessed anywhere, at any time, and these platforms shifted once again. Mobile learning, at its very core, is a simple definition. First, it involves mobile technology. In this day and age, learning can occur on a variety of smartphones, tablets, e-readers, and other handheld devices. This technology allows users to stay plugged into their learning at an almost constant rate if they want to. The limits only come when dealing with range and type of signal. Second, mobile learning is defined is undefined by location. Unlike the days of having to sit in front of the computer to access learning modules, mobile learning can be used anywhere. We believe mobile learning truly can be accomplished anytime, anywhere. And finally, mobile learning is defined by how it is used to increase learning. Instead of focusing on a broad picture, mobile learning typically focuses on one or two small specific areas. Most mobile learning revolves around learning new content, serving as a reference, or exploring current content in greater depth. So what makes mobile learning so different from e-learning most of our students are already familiar with? While they have many similarities, three four key areas separate them. First, mobile learning is about timing. It is no longer limited to a time in a computer lab with a mobile learning lab or even within the confines of a school day. Additionally, unlike e-learning, where students are usually expected to complete full modules from beginning to end, mobile learning is also designed to occur in shorter chunks of time. Second is context and content. With e-learning, students will usually go through a setup of some sort some introduction that will frame the learning module for them. Mobile learning removes this component. By the title or the purpose of the application itself, the context is already set, saving time for the student and focusing their learning. Third, the assessment portion itself often separates e-learning from mobile learning. Because e-learning is designed to cover larger segments of information, over longer periods of time, the assessment is usually more cumulative in nature and occurs at the end of the module. With mobile learning, assessment is typically quick and feedback can be instantaneous. And the final aspect that sets mobile learning apart from e-learning is user experience. Mobile devices are significantly smaller and therefore have smaller screens than laptops or computers. Many of those screens also have touch capabilities, which broadens the range of activities students can experience. Because of this, many more options are usually available for users compared to the options of e-learning on the computer. Additionally, e-learning typically requires internet connectivity, while most mobile learning apps can be used either online or offline. If you walk through the hallways or cafeterias of almost any secondary school, and many elementary ones as well, mobile devices will be easily visible. They are everywhere, and our students are already familiar with them. With mobile learning, the buzzword in many schools today, and students being familiar with and having access to them, it is important to have a plan to use mobile learning in schools. There is no single right way to manage mobile devices. However, there are several key items that should be included in any plan. Clear definitions are a must. No matter the, their benefits, mobile devices can cause distractions. Ringing in class, students texting often, photo taking and sharing can all be examples of this. Clear definitions help to combat misuse of the devices by also describing consequences if the limits are broken. Teachers, students, and parents must be aware of the guidelines and expectations when it comes to how mobile devices will be used in the school. These clear definitions will ensure your school is promoting an atmosphere of positive learning. Parent acknowledgement is also essential in that plan. Many parents worry about how and when their children will use mobile devices. 
Ensure parents are aware of your school's plan for mobile devices as well as the school's liability if the devices are stolen or damaged. A signature on file from the beginning of the year will help significantly if any situations arise throughout your school year. And finally, be prepared for alternative assignments for the students whose parents do not want them using a device or for students who may not have one if the device is being used during the day. This is still more common than many may realize, and you do not want to be in a situation where you cannot be providing learning for all. Once you have that plan in place, you must also understand the variety of mobile learning applications out there to determine the best way to use them. Mobile learning can typically be divided into three areas. Resource applications are just as they sound. These provide information to students in a quick, clear, and concise manner. These apps can be as simple as a dictionary and thesaurus, or as in-depth as turning a device into a ruler or a graphic calculator. The second area of mobile learning is games. These are exactly as they sound. They are short, usually animated games that encourage student learning, even when the students may not be aware they are learning. Additionally, many learning game applications allow students to compete with others or earn awards for certain achievement levels. Social collaboration increases learning for students and encourages them to learn with and from their peers. A third and final area of mobile learning is assessments. These applications are designed to assess student knowledge. They can occur on specific content areas or can be more broad in nature. It does not matter which mobile learning area you focus on because the one thing they all have in common is the ability to increase student learning and achievement. There are literally hundreds and thousands of applications out there in both Android version through the Google Play or Apple version through iTunes. Additionally, there are companies that will create apps specifically for the needs of your students, school, or district. Each of these apps will fall into one of the previously mentioned areas, and it can be overwhelming at times to decide the best one to use. The best advice in this area is to know ahead of time what specifically you want to focus on with your goal of mobile learning for that specific lesson. This focus will then help you determine which app will best suit you and the needs of your students. The apps listed here are just samples of the type of applications you can find. You have flashcards that can function as games, graphing calculators or dictionaries that function in the area of resources, or quizzes that function in the area of assessment. Also listed here are the two links for the Google Play and for iTunes. Both of these list the broad list of apps that are available under the generic education search. An additional example of an assessment app is the Lumos Learning Step Up Mobile app. This, map, this app is true anytime, anywhere learning. It is usable in offline mode as well as online. Through the app, students will have the ability to link to the exact common core standard they are studying and learn more about it. The content is available for grades 3 through 8 and focuses on math and English language arts. Students have three options when using the app. They can take a full cumulative test of mixed standards, a partial test where a certain number of questions are chosen, or access content for a specific standard. Once they have chosen the type of assessment, they can then choose their mode. Normal mode allows students to access the content in a format that is similar to most standardized tests. Learning mode gives the user a detailed explanation of the answer if their answer choice they selected is wrong. Although the world of mobile learning is wide open, there are several final reminders to keep in mind when using them in schools. First, mobile learning is a resource. It does not and should not take the place of primary learning for your students. The beauty of mobile learning is that it can be accessed at home as well. Teachers can teach their primary lesson in the class and then extend that lesson with mobile learning apps either in class 
or even at home. Additionally, when using mobile apps, safety must also be considered. Using these mobile learning applications is a prime opportunity for talking with and teaching students about general online safety, and that should be a necessary portion of any mobile learning plan. Finally, keep your parents involved. They are more likely to support mobile learning, either at school or at home, if they are aware of what is going on. Utilize their input when appropriate. And finally, have fun with mobile learning. Remember that app usage is something many of your students access on a daily basis. Tapping into that familiarity and encouraging learning through all of it can be a great way to captivate your students and increase student achievement. So at this time, we'd like to go ahead and open up for any questions or answers or questions that you might have so we can um, have a discussion. Thank you, Marissa. Um, I see a question here from Ms. Watson. Do I have to pay to download the app, and when will you be releasing the iOS app? Uh, the app is free itself, and the iOS app should actually be released by the end of the month, is what our goal has been. Give another minute to see if we have any other question come in. If you wish to ask the question verbally, you know, please raise your hand or uh, type in a quick message. I can open up your lines so that you can actually ask your question. And while we're waiting just a few minutes for any other questions to come in, I would like to go ahead and um, note our address that's on the screen. We would definitely like to keep this discussion active, and we provide additional information as you move to incorporate mobile learning in your schools. So if you would like to participate in that discussion or receive new information as it becomes available, you can join the discussion by liking our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash Lumos Learning School. You can also feel free to leave a comment on the page if you think that this is something that would be helpful for other educators as well, and you can share that page too. Okay. I don't know if I see any other questions coming in. Do you, Makunda? No, I don't see it either. Uh, I think we could wrap it up. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining with us today as we explored some of the Things to focus on as you try to maximize mobile learning on your campuses and in your schools. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact myself at the email address on the screen or on the phone number listed. And again, feel free to like our Facebook page and stay active in the discussion. Have a great day. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, thank you all for attending. You all have a great day.